glory to the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. We want to welcome you in the house of the Lord. We want to thank God for his grace. Amen. We would like to extend the special greetings to our mother in the house. Hallelujah. Be greeted in the name of Jesus. Mama. And the whole leadership of the church and everyone who answered to the call of God today by coming to the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. You love Jesus and you love God. And you are loved by God. Hallelujah. We are going to go, I want to invite your attention to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. They're going to help us to read the requested that it's read in the amplified version. And we are going to read verse 15 and we're going to read verse 16. It's our foundational scripture today. The song in Venice in the There is no other God. Thank you. Let's read. Let's read for us and amplify. Jeremiah three verse fifteen and sixteen. The amplified one. It reads as follows. Give you, sorry, it's amplified, amplified reads as follows. And in the final time, I will give you spiritual shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and true understanding. It will be in those days when you have repented and multiplied and increased says the Lord. They will no longer say the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It will not come to mind. Nor will they seriously remember it. Nor will they miss it. Nor will it be made again. For instead of the ark which symbolizes my presence, I will be present. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word in Jesus' name. We are going to speak under the theme that says we carry the fullness of God. We carry, can we all say we carry the fullness of God. The first, the 15th verse the Bible is indicating that in the last days God will raise or will give us spiritual leaders who will lead us according to the truth from the heart of God who will help us to know the knowledge and understand God 
These are the leaders that uh, Paul spoke about. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. No, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is what Timothy was telling, was told by Paul as a preparation of the last days. Timothy, you need to study to show yourself approved by God because you are going to lead the people of God in the last days. And we understand why because that book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk based on the school of, that you went to. Chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. So, the earth will be filled with the glory of the knowledge of God. And for that knowledge of the glory of God to be revealed, God will raise shepherds that will feed his people according to knowledge for the glory to descend as water covers the sea. Ignorance and lack of knowledge is no longer going to be the order of the time. What, what does this mean to us? We need to learn and to love to study the word, the written word. I'm talking Retire about the written word. The written word. The Bible, the book. Bibiri. We must love to read the book. Bibiri. I just want to give you a simple method. Because, because God wants us to live in this life of glory. But for us to tap into that, firstly, we need to love to read the word. We thank God for those who saw that time coming. Even though they are no longer with us, but they left us a treasure. That you people study the Bible, finish it. There could have been any other thing that they could have told us, but we believe, informed by the Spirit of God of the last days, believing in the Spirit that will be reigning in the last days, they encourage us, read the Bible, the book. Before any other thing, read the book. Love to read the book. That is the first step. When we read and when we love to read the book, remember there was something that we were told. Don't worry about you understanding the book. Read the book and finish the book. Then I learn at a later stage. Because it is not always the case that you can read the book and understand it. And we were not penalized for us not understanding the book. We were told, read, just read the book. And then I realized that it's, Im it's important to read the book. I want to, to give you this order that I've learned. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 8 Chapter 8. Chapter 8. From verse 26. The Bible talks about Philip. Who was sent by the Spirit of the Lord to go to Gaza. From Jerusalem to Gaza. What was he sent to do? He was sent because there was a man who was the eunuch 
who went to Jerusalem to pray than rather to worship. But now he was going back from Jerusalem, going home. But there are things that even though he went to Jerusalem, he was going home without understanding them. This man, the Kendak, the, the author, who was the, under the authority of the Kendak Queen, Kendak Queen, this Kendak queen. queen. The Bible says he was sitting in his chariot reading in the book of the prophet Isaiah. You see, he was not lazy. He was reading. Whether he understood or not, now it's not what is in question, but he was reading the book. And when he was reading the book, that triggered heaven to send Philip to go and help him. Sent by the Spirit of God. He went to the man. He found the man reading. And he asked the man, do you understand what you are reading? Ask your neighbor, do you understand when you read? Yes, the question was, do you understand? It was not a condemning statement. But he wanted to help him because he was ordered by the Spirit of God to go to help him. Do you understand what you are reading? Yes, you are the man under the authority, but do you understand? The man said, how can I understand without anybody explaining the word to me? How can I know without anyone explaining to me? Then the Bible says, Philip, Philip, this man, I said we must love to, to, to study the written word. This was not the time of the Bible, but they had the scrolls to read. So he was reading. Then Philip was ordered to help the man because this man has the desire to know. Yes, he had the first, he had the desire to know. Yes, he was not understanding, but he had the desire to know. After Philip, the Bible says, he began to explain him the scriptures concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now he's explaining the written word so that he can move this man from the written word of God to the revealed word of God. We cannot have the revealed word of God if we don't know the written word of God. That when you have the understanding of the written word, God can entrust you with the revealed word. Because we live in the time of the revelations from above. The written word of God create the capacity of the revealed word of God. Most of the people they don't care about reading the word, but they want to tell you what the Lord said to them. Even some Gomas can do that. We are not magicians. We are children of the light, and the word of God is the light that will illuminate what is in the spirit for us. When you have the revealed word, uh, let me tell you this. Because the revealed word of God will lead us to the living word of God. <laughs> the written word translate us to the revealed word. The revealed word take us to the living word. The Bible says, me and you we are 
a letter written from God. Not written on the tablets of stones or by ink, but by the Spirit of God. Faith does not operate in the written word of God. It operates on the revealed word of God. That is why many people, they try many things and it does not work. They say the Bible does not work. Faith. Remember when Paul says faith comes by hearing. There was no Bible. So where did he read that? He heard from God. Remember he had an encounter with Christ himself. When Christ revealed himself to him. People were around him. They did not hear what Christ said to him. That's why he can speak with boldness and exercise his faith and his faith worked. Because. Faith work in the revealed word of God, not in the written word of God. Let me give you an example. That one of the great servants of God, Yong Chong, of the great servants of God, Yong Chong, talk about about other sisters who were coming from a powerful conference. It was on the mountainous area. So, they were charged only by what they had been written. But there's nothing that the Lord really revealed to them. And what they read, they thought it's what will make them to exercise their faith. So when they were going home, they had to come across the river. That was full. This is not a story, it's the reality of what happened. So they remember what is written in the book. That Peter once walked on top of the water. We have read that. And we are from the powerful conference. That was not revealed to them. Yes, they read it, but it was not revealed for them to do that. Do you know what happened? They tried to walk. They drowned and died. And their death was because of the faithfulness of God. Because they were not living in what God has revealed to them. They were living on what they've read. Child of God, let me tell you, to go to the living word of God. This has nothing to do with the background that you come from. If you can take this book and internalize this book and meditate upon this book, day and night this book, God will begin to reveal himself to you. When he reveals himself to you, he takes you to the living Word. The word of God become alive in you. You no longer talk what is written, but what is revealed because it's alive in you and me. Rahab had what God has done. She did not have a good background. She meditated upon that. And it was revealed about the power of God in her life. On the base of the revealed word, she exercised her faith. And the Bible says she was saved in her family. It was not something that she just read that God did only. But it was revealed to her. Once the word of God is revealed in me, I become the living word of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, where we are, the context of the scripture, we, we explain verse 15. Now, verse 16 says, there will come a time where you will repent, and when you repent, to repent it means Change the way you think concerning God. Change your mind concerning God. When you have changed, 
Then you will multiply. When you multiply, this is what will happen. You will not long for the old good times. You will not wish for the good time that you want experience in your life. The Bible says, you will not remember the Ark of the Covenant. You will not even remember it. It will not come to your mind. You will not even wish for it. You will not even think about it. You will not even long to rebuild it. Not because it was bad, but because the Ark of the Covenant was a, a symbol of the reality to come. The act of the covenant was the shadow of the reality to come. The Bible says, you won't remember it because God himself, Jesus himself, will be present with you. You don't need the shadow when you have the reality. You don't need the shadow when you have the reality. Okay, let me tell you. That Ark of the Covenant, I want to invite you in this. To go and read the book of Exodus chapter 37, how it was constructed according to the design that God has given. It was covered by the pure gold. And what was the resemblance of the pure gold and what was the figure or the symbol of the pure gold? Our salvation and the purity of God himself. No spot, no wrinkle, no tempered with the purity of God himself. Because the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol and a representation of the presence of God. It was not meant to be worshipped, but it was meant to go with them wherever they go. As long as they have it, there is no enemy that can defeat them. Last week we were talking about the presence of God. Inside that box, which was the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible says there was a jar of manna. You read that, you can read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. A jar of manna that was placed inside. Why was manna placed in the inside? To remind the Israelites when they are walking about the provision of God. That God once provided for you. So as long as you have this presence of God represented by the box, which is the ark, God will still provide for you as long as you live. But that was the shadow. It was not the reality. The Bible says, inside the ark, there was a rod of Aaron. This is the rod that budded. Remember when Israel, they, they, they were angry at God. In the book of Numbers, the Bible says, God called the elders and said, every family, bring a rod, bring a rod and put them here. We take them into the temple. When they put them in the temple, when they left, when they come back, only the rod of Aaron budded. Other rod they did not. And that was the representation of the high priest of Aaron. That he is the only one who is the high priest approved by God amongst you here. That rod of Aaron it was not connected to anything. It was cut off the branch. It was just like any other rod. But only the rod of Aaron blossomed. And this was revealing to us Jesus Christ. The Bible says by the mouth of prophet Isaiah. 
Jesus Christ will sprout out like a root from the desert. No support of any kind. He will rise and he will flourish wherever he goes without support. He will still do what God has called him to do. And the budding of the rod, it was in symbol of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That this is by the power of God for it to sprout, to show even the work of the ministry in the church that it is not going to be by mighty nor by power but by the spirit of God the things of God will blossom and flourish without even other people trying to support them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that was the shadow. There are many things that when we read the Bible, they are the shadow of the reality to come. That is why if you try to take the natural for natural, you miss the revelation. Let me give you an example when you miss the revelation. Jesus Christ said, everybody carry your cross and follow me. Why don't we come with a cross in the church here, everybody carry But there are others who carry the cross wherever they go. Yes, in the natural, that's what Jesus did. But no one can carry a physical cross and come here carrying it in the house of the Lord. Because Christ did that part for me and you. Yes, Christo, oh, sweet, and for me rin. and you is to crucify our flesh on the cross by faith in Christ Jesus. Not carrying the cross. You see, people who do this thing, don't blame them to the extreme. They read it in the book. But taking the natural, with the natural, you miss the revelation of God. Can I give you another example? When the elders of the community come to Elisha, they say the land that we are living in has become infertile. There's nothing that we can plant. Elisha said, Elisha, bring a bowl. And he put salt in the bowl. And he sprinkled the water down. And the whole thing that was happening changed. But do you know that salt was just an example of purification? And John 15, 3 said, you are now pure, you are now clean because of the word that I've spoken over your life. But do you know that the Christian was still using salt in order to purify things of the spirit? Somebody says shadow, shadow, shadow. Let me give you another example. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God was not yet given to all. Under the shadow of the reality, few were given the Spirit of God and the power of God to can see what is happening in the Spirit. And the devil even copied that. After Saul, God rejected Saul. Do you know what Saul did? He went and consulted. Because he knew that there are few of them who can see in the realm of the spirit. And he went and said, please call the spirit of Samuel for me. I think this is where Sangoma's spirit came from. Yeah, because the devil copied that and even some Gomez can see what is happening. But the source of the spirit that they are using, that's what is wrong. The Bible says that woman when she was calling the spirit of Samuel, the spirit of Samuel appeared. 
But it was wrong what was happening there. But I'm explaining that the reason Saul went to that woman, it was simply because the few were given the power to see. But do you know what Joel 228 said today? The Spirit of the Lord will be poured upon all, all flesh. Not few, all flesh. As long as you are the believer in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the Lord will be poured upon all flesh. Young men will see visions. Your daughters will, will prophesy to reveal the things that are still to come. Now we are living in the reality of time, not under the shadow. Let me give you another example before I continue. The Bible says, when John the Baptist appeared in his waist, he was wearing a rope. Do you know how many people wear rope today? And there's the way we saw it in the written word is there. Ask your neighbor, do you have one? Why don't you do it? Because it's written. So you people are you pretenders? Why don't you have ropes all over you? Tell your neighbor, thank God for the revealed word. Now when Jesus came, yes, he said, in my loins, in my waist, I will tie the belt of righteousness. Not the belt of a rope somewhere to ask yourself. Amen. I will rope myself with righteousness. And even when we do the warfare, the Bible says one of the armor of God that give your loins with the truth. Not with the ropes. Give yourself with the truth in your life. What does that mean? Don't produce anything which is a lie, which does not come from the truth. Thank God that when we do the warfare prayer, we are many. But I was trying to show you. Because do you remember the scripture that they touch not my anointed ones? That is under the shadow. What does it mean, touch not my anointed one? And who are the anointed ones? Ask your name, who are the anointed ones? Are you anointed? Some of you are like, no, it's for the few. Really? No. Pastor Lazarus, sometimes I was coming from prayer. He was praying for me. My elder, can you open the book of 1 John chapter 2? He prayed for me. After he prayed, he said, I'm not giving you this by laying your hands. But I want you to know this is what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing to me. I was given this verse. It was not coming from him. He was declaring what the Spirit of God is informing him to tell me. Because it was before I tapped into that knowledge. I was still thinking that there are few who are anointed. And you must not touch the anointed ones. Did you find it? Can you please read First John chapter 2, verse 20? We want to hear who are the anointed. You can read in King James, whatever, whatever you find. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Oh. And all of you know the truth. Hey, you have an anointing but from I'm the God. Holy One. And all of you, you know the truth. Go by Diva. All of you, you have the anointing from the Holy One. Let me tell you, the reason why in the shadow you could not touch the anointed one, it was because the anointing was given to the few. There were few. That's why even Jehoshaphat, when he was going to fight, he could not know what he did until the anointing of the Lord rest upon Jehoshaphat. And Jezeel come and say, God said, 
you should not fight. For the battle is not yours. It is the Lord. He was there, but he did not know what to do. But we are not living in that time now. You hear most of the people speaking things like, the anointing of that one is higher than the anointing of that one. What does that mean? What is an anointing? Basically, what is an anointing? Do we have a higher anointing and a less anointing? John chapter 3, verse 33 and 34. The Bible says, when God gives his spirit, he gives the spirit without measure. You are given a full measure of the spirit and of the anointing of God. I'm not standing here because I'm anointing more, more, anointed more than you. What is operating here is the gift of the spirit given according to the responsibility by the grace of God. Not the anointing. The anointing is the enabling power to do what God has called you to do. You cannot increase it, you cannot reduce it because you didn't earn it by what you did. What did Saul in the book of Old Testament did to get an anointing? If it can be increased and reduced, what did he do? For Abraham to be the father of all nations, how can you be an anointed man to father of all nations? What did he do? Because the Bible says he was coming from a family of people who worship idols. But God said, I have called you. And I have anointed you. Tell your neighbor, you are anointed. You are anointed. Okay, let's read where we are. Let's read 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. NIV is read as follows. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. This anointing abides and remains with you forever. It does not come in for you. did not earn it. The Bible says, as for the anointing that you have received, <laughs> it dwells in you forever. It remains with you and it teaches you all things. But the Bible says, you don't need any teacher to teach you anything. This is the very same God who says you need the apostle, the prophet, the pastor. He's not confusing himself. So don't come to church and say, I'm anointed, I don't need to be taught. That's not what I'm talking about. He's talking about, even if I tell you and stand here and tell you a lie, the anointing that in you, it will keep you. You cannot be deceived. Remember the context. The context. John was talking about be careful of the antichrist and the deceiver. And God, for you to be able to differentiate between the deceiver and those who are true, this anointing will teach you everything. You don't need somebody to come and say, I'm a pastor. The anointing in you must agree. You are a servant of God. That's why Paul said we don't need letters of recommendations. The anointing in you. And when you read the, let me correct something again. The Bible says, these people, they went out of us to prove that they were not of us. For if they were of us, they could have stayed and manifest with us. That is not talking about people leaving denomination. When people leave here and go to other church, don't say, you see, they were not of us. The Bible is talking about leaving the body and join the Antichrist spirit. See, preachers everywhere, they are fighting for people. We thank God here we were taught. We don't own people. People belong to Jesus. But what we are talking about here when we are about to finish, hear me attentively now. 
We are living in the time of the reality, not of the shadow of the figures or the types. The Ark of the Covenant was representing the presence of God. It was so powerful that when you walk with it, wherever you go, no enemy can defeat you whatever, whatever. But when Israel messed up God, when they were in the army by not following what God told them, the Ark of the Covenant was captured. The Bible said when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant, when it was taken to the temple of their gods, the Ark was so powerful that the Bible says when they wake up to enter the temple, their duck on God was fallen down. Who hit it? The Ark of the Covenant which was represented by the presence of God. They thought, ah, it's not enough. They put it again. They, you know, people, the other people who worship the God, that the statue. They, re, they, 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 make, they, they erect that ark again. They, 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 the God there, the God again. The following day when they went. <laughs> this time it didn't only broke the head and the hand. It was in pieces. What hit that God? The presence of the Lord, which was represented by the ark of God. So you want to tell me that if that was under the shadow, how much more in the reality now? The Bible says when they take back the Ark of the Covenant, when they were coming back with it, there was a man called Azar who was not, who was not purified or cleansed or given the designation to touch the ark. You see, because it was for the few to do that. Out of the generosity of his heart, he wanted to help the ark not to fall. The Bible says God struck him and died. And his death was because of the fullness, the fullness, faithfulness of God. Because he was touching what he was not supposed to touch. It was not yet Then the Bible says David and his people, they were afraid. They took the Ark of the Covenant to the man called Obed-Edom, who was not even a Jew. He was a Gittite. The Bible says when the Ark of the Covenant was in the house, Obed Edom was blessed. For three months, everyone who entered the house of Obed Edom was blessed. Everybody who passed by the streets, they were blessed. Why? The ark of the presence of the Lord was in the house of Obed Edom. Okay, so are we supposed to create something like that? The Bible says you will never remember about that. You will not even build like something like that. Why? Let's run now. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Referring to Mary. You shall give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus. For his name shall be called Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with us. That's why the Bible says, you will not need the Ark of the Covenant because I am with you. I will be with you. Somebody shout Emmanuel. I am your God and I am with you. Isaiah the prophet prophesied this. In chapter 11 he said, you will not call conspiracy what they call conspiracy because even if they plan against your life, they won't succeed. Why? Because God is with you. Amen. Somebody shout, God is with us. God is with us. Emmanuel is with us. I don't need shadow of anything. I need God. God is with us. Hey, can you walk with me? Can you walk with me? 
This is what we're talking. Remember what the scripture last week we were told when the Bible said, Moses said, if you are not going, the scripture said what? If you are not going with us, we are not going anywhere. Don't let us go. Now, Emmanuel gives you an assurance that God is with us. We are walking with him. He is with us. But above God is with us. Remember we are talking about the fullness of God. God is with us is not enough. Hey, God is with us is not enough. I say God is with us is not enough. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 said, If God be for us, who can be against us? It's not about him just with us, but now he is for us. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Because when they had the ark, there was nobody who can be against them. Now God is for us. Somebody say, God is for us. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can accuse us? The Bible says, for we have overcome the accuser of the brethren by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. There is no accusation that can stand against the child of God anymore. Because God is for you. Hey. God is for you. He's not just with you. He is for you. When God is for you, the Bible says, who can condemn them that he chose? To condemn it means to declare unfit or unworthy. Who can do that to you? Because God is for you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, God is for me. He is for me. He is with me. Oh, tell your neighbor, God is for me, it's not enough. <laughs> God is for me, it's not enough. <laughs> the Bible says, this is the mystery of greatness. The secret that has been now revealed that Christ he lives in you and he is the hope of glory oh Jesus he lives in me I am the address of God God lives in me I'm not trying to find God he lives in me say your neighbor God lives in you he lives in you Ephesians chapter 2 verse 22 said you are standing on the on the foundation that was built by the apostle and the prophet and God is building it to be the house that he dwell in permanently. God dwell in you. What else can you want if God dwells in you? Paul said, let the eyes of our understanding be open, child of God, so that you can comprehend this thing. The fullness of God dwelling in a human being. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 said, it pleases God <laughs> to dwell in Christ in his fullness in a human body in a human body he, God dwells in a human body ask your neighbor do you have a body and verse 10 said because of your union with Christ you are complete in him we carry not just God with us. We carry not just God for us, but we carry 
God is with us. And God is in us. God lives in you, child of God. You carry the fullness, the totality of the power of God. If by the time of the Ark of the Covenant, no one could stand against them, how much more now when you have the reality, me and you, Who can touch you? Who can overcome you? The fullness of God. We thank God for the song that was composed in this house. Do you remember that song? Do you remember that song? The fullness of God. The glory of the Lamb. Not around me. In me.